Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video, we're doing a lap and a T-joint, 2G position, horizontal. This is geared toward welding students and welding instructors. This is a common joint in welding school. I say welding instructors because sometimes they're spread kind of thin. They might need to just say, hey, watch this video and then come get me if you need me and I'll give you a demo in addition. So the first step is in welding aluminum is always give it a wipe down with some kind of degreaser like acetone or alcohol and it helps to give it a wire brushing with a stainless steel wire brush that isn't always necessary and for the sake of you know just getting a lot of practice in probably could get by just eliminating the wire brushing just give it a really good wipe down with acetone and you get you get plenty of practice in also it doesn't hurt at all to wipe that rod down they got a little funk on them sometimes and you can tack the joint together without filler metal aluminum tacks are weak as water but for the sake of just speed and for the sake of uh, just uh, getting it done and tacking and, you know, for a practice exercise like this, you usually can get by without using any filler. So I just punch it, punch that foot pedal and, you know, give it a lot of amperage all at once and, and uh, drive those things together. Same, th same thing here on the T, uh, both ends. Usually I light up, let it, let it figure out where I'm at, and then once I get my bearings and I just ram the foot pedal down, make sure to have a good 50 amps more than what I would normally weld, and then it usually fuses them together real well. I put a little extra tack in the middle just because those end tacks are so weak, and then I'm off to the races welding. Got that tack in the middle I light up on. I want to make sure to kind of wash it into the corner and keep it small as I go. And you notice the electrode angle and the electrode tip. I got kind of a ball on the tip. I don't really recommend that. But I'm uh, testing out a machine today, field testing a machine, going through all kinds of settings, waveforms, frequencies, and everything, and it's putting all kinds of shapes on the end of the electrode. So I figured I might as well weld some joints here and film it while I was testing the machine out. So the, the tips on the electrode don't mean anything as far as, you know, optimum, just the fact that, that you know, it's instructive that they do change as you change the settings on a machine. All right, some more lap joint here. We're doing just a step ahead pause. You might notice me even backing up a little bit as I add rod. When you add rod, the puddle gets bigger. It grows in height. Sometimes it grows right into the electrode. So you know, it works for me to just kind of stop and pull back just a little bit as I dip that rod in. That's the lap joint. And next we'll do the T joint. After the, both sides of the lap are done, or you can alternate laps and T's. Doesn't really matter. Got two of each. T joint, same thing. You want to wash it forward and back, neck it down, try to make sure it goes all the way into that corner before you just start adding rod. And I flow it into the corner and then back up a little bit as I as I dip the rod. Just like that. And if it doesn't go, I wait on it a second. If it doesn't quite go into the corner, I just give it a half a second or a second more and let it neck on down into that corner before I proceed. Again, you'll notice that ball on the end of the electrode is kind of non-uniform. I'm using 2% thoriated electrode here and uh, 332 diameter. It doesn't really, doesn't really uh, ball evenly at all. And uh, at times it got some nodules on it and whatnot. But I'm just, uh, again, I'm just putting some arc time on this machine and uh, trying to notice what it does as I change the settings. You'll notice in a little while the tip of the electrode will be a little bit more tapered. Uh, you know, I generally try to weld with one kind of tapered, but those settings like AC balance and frequency have, a, have an effect on the tip of that electrode and what it looks like. All right, after we do the uh, both sides of that T, and you'll notice here I got a little bit of a taper going on the electrode, but after you do both sides of the T, then get more, get more use out of the metal. Come back with two more beads. That's good practice. Don't just throw that thing in the scrap bin and, and get another piece. Weld two beads all the way down on both sides, and uh, and then you get more use out of the metal, and you'll help your school's budget. Your instructor will appreciate it, and you'll get more practice. You think it's just running beads, and you're not getting practice, but if you do it with intention, try to space your ripples evenly, and, and uh, think about things like torch angle and arc length, it is really good practice to run those extra beads. All right, that's it.